I remember as a little kid, I liked saying Obadiah. I, I, I liked saying Obadiah. Like he was one bad dude. Amen. So, so Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Could you imagine this? The king is telling the man of God, Hey, you're the one that's troubling the people of God. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house. Man, you talk about name calling, right? In that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal 450, and the prophets of the groves 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. You need to be careful what table you're eating at. I was going to preach on that tonight, but I was like, nope. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. If I could preach just for a little bit, to be infecting or to be infected or be affecting, to be infected or to be affecting. Amen. Brother Price, if you could pray over the remainder of the service, please. Amen. Let's give God some praise as we're seated in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to try not to be, I'm going to try to blast through this tonight. I'm getting the floor about seven, a little after seven tonight. It's about 723. Amen. But I do want to deliver what God has given me. And we've took our time all the way through to hear testimonies. And I, I want to say this. I believe we're saved by the preaching of the word. I love music, but I'm telling you, that's what got Satan in trouble. You get so involved in music. Amen. There's men of God that's called to preach, and they're focusing on their music ministry. And, and, and they're struggling, tapping into the spirit. I'm here to tell you, you do. Amen. You get into the word of God, you're not going to have no problem tapping into the spirit of God. Amen. But tonight I want to preach about being infected or affecting. Often the preacher's voice is not always going to be a pleasing voice in your life. Here in the passage of scripture that I read, we see here that King Ahab uh, was following the same footsteps of his dad and uh, uh, he was leading uh, all of Israel into the worship of Baal and idolatry and here in this passage and for time's sake tonight, I don't, I'm not going to read all the scriptures, but uh, uh, Elijah called called the prophets of Baal out. He said, hey, you, I, I want you to meet me at, at this mount and we're going to find out who is God. We, we're living in that time right now, Brother Eugene. People, amen, are looking to find who God is. Paul stood on Athens Hill and he said, You're, this is a God you need to be worshiping right here. Amen. To the unknown God. Amen. His name is Jesus tonight. There's a God that the this world does not recognize anymore. There's a God. Amen. This world is pushing aside and we're not the, the same country used to be, but I believe it's up to the church. Amen. To step up to the plate and not be afraid of a little competition in the spiritual realm and say, hey, I want to prove to the world World. Amen. Who God really is. And Elijah stepped up to the plate in the time. Amen. Where the king Ahab. Amen. It turned the entire nation of Israel.
Israel into idolatry and, and Elijah amen being a man of God had something burning in his spirit that said I can't be quiet I want to go on top of a mountain and I want to proclaim to the whole nation of Israel who their God has been all along. I believe it's time in this day and hour that we live in. We need to find the highest place in Barso. Amen. To proclaim who God is. Amen. To lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul being not ashamed of this gospel. Too often we want to worship God in church. But we're afraid to mention the name Jesus outside the walls. I was leaving Walmart the other day. And this lady... She, she was asking for money for something. A lot of people's asking for money right now. And I told her, ma'am, I don't have no money on me right now. And she goes, hey. And she mentioned the name Jesus to me as I was walking away. And I turned around and I looked at her. And I said, that's the sweetest name that I know. There's something about the name of Jesus. She mentioned the name of Jesus and stopped me right in my tracks. Amen. And I went back and talked to her a little bit more. I believe in this time, in this day, there's many people claiming they serve other kind of gods out there. They serve other kind of, amen, ideas out there. But I'm here to tell you, there's only one God. And his name is Jesus. God knows no other God beside him. That means there is no other God in this universe, in this galaxy that was ever created that whatever was or ever will be the only God that ever will be is Jesus but we live in a time right now amen where preachers of the gospel and and saints of God are becoming the enemy of the nation Being called hate crimes to preach the word of God. Being called hate crimes to preach. Straight is a way and narrow is a way that leadeth unto life. And few there be that fall. It's a hate crime. Amen. To preach that there's only one Lord and one faith and one baptism. I'm here to tell you we were a nation that embraced the word of God. But we're a nation now that is pushed. Like in the time of King Ahab. We have pushed Jesus out of the picture and embraced idolatry in the nation that we live in we become desensitized brother Sato how about we just mindlessly walk around in this world what people are worshiping and then the God of sports worshiping the God of entertainment worshiping the God of knowledge worshiping all these other gods out there and we have no problem not saying a word I want to talk about are you infected Or are you affecting the world around you? I began to piece this message together. Amen. And I began to think about infection. Amen. Infection is one of the leading causes of of, of surgeries going wrong in the hospital. It's not it's not necessarily the surgery. Amen. But it's uh, it's it's how clean. Amen. All the utensils were that were used or the knives. Amen. That were used in the surgery. Everything has to be sterilized. Amen. During the surgery. Amen. And the care afterwards. Amen. Has to be done right the right antibiotics have to be put in amen or else infection will seep in and people lose limbs people lose lives because of infection and I begin to think about spiritually being infected by the world you can't live for God one day and expect to live, amen, to get the blessings of God by living for the world the next day. If you're not careful, infection can set in and pretty soon you will embrace all other kinds of ideas and you won't see the, amen, this world how you used to see it. You'll look at the church as the problem. You'll look at the church as the issue. You'll look at the church as the one that needs to change. But I'm here to remind somebody, amen, sin has to be dealt with amen or it will destroy you you have to deal with sin we have too many Christians that are playing with sin instead of dealing with sin we live in a generation where carnality is trying to react to the word of God but carnality never reacts positively to the word of God 
It always rejects the word of God. Your spirit is starving for something pure. Your spirit is starving for something that's not of this world. For we were created in the image of God. Before this world was ever created, there was God. We were created in the image of God. So that means nothing in this world can satisfy us. I want you to think, I want you to grasp this. This hit me like a ton of bricks. Hey Amen. We're created in the image of somebody that existed before the world ever was. So why, amen, something that was created after God satisfies somebody that was created in the image of somebody that was created before the world was ever? I'll drop that right there. It's Sunday night, but I'm going into it, Brother Sato. Some of you teenagers are not wanting to feel the presence of God. And you're blaming your youth pastor. You're blaming the pastor. You're blaming the assistant pastor. Some of your parents are blaming the church. Why your children are acting the way they are and living the way they, uh, the way they are. I'm just going to step right into it tonight. It's nobody's fault but your own. If you say it's the church's fault, my kids this way. My God, you need to take some personal responsibility for your kids. Hey Amen. They're being infected by the world. Hey Amen. They're being infected by the poison of sin. They're being infected by the poison of carnality. Amen. And they're not desiring the spiritual things of God. When I was a young man growing up in church, I remember I had a call on my life. Amen. And I knew I was running from God. I didn't want to preach. I didn't want to heed to the will of God in my life. I stayed in church. I didn't backslide. But I wasn't doing the will of God. And I came to a point, amen, where I couldn't touch God like I used to. I couldn't feel God like I used to. Amen. And I came to a point in my life where I was deciding, did I want to stay in church or did I want to leave? Some of you are going to watch your kids leave God at the age of 18. And you're going to blame everybody else but yourself. I just dropped the mic and walked off. I take living for God serious. I remember heeding to the will of God in my life because I didn't want to be infected by the world. I didn't want to turn out the way the enemy was trying to mold my life. I didn't want to be. Amen. And I remember before I was ever preaching, amen, I was getting behind the preacher. Amen. And when the preacher asked me to do something, I wasn't always contending with them and saying, you know what, I just don't feel that. I'm here to tell you, don't you realize there's somebody bigger than your own ignorant mind that knows what's best for you, that knows the best direction for you amen don't you realize there's somebody greater than your own mind amen that cares more about your family than you do amen if you want your family to be somebody amen use of God you've got to allow amen yourself not to be infected by the world that we live in King Ahab got to the point where the man of God was the problem in his life. I've been pastoring here for 10 years. Micah, I've been pastoring here for 10 years. And over the span of 10 years, I've watched many people walk away from this from this little church right here and say God's called me here and God's told me to do this and I know it's better for my family hey amen I'm telling you what I went back to Texas this year and I watched a man that used to worship with us a man that used to praise with us a man that had a call has a call on his life that was getting into the ministry and he was preaching the word of God and God was beginning to change and transform his family but I watched a man hey amen sit in a church and just a little town in Texas struggling to get a hold of God struggling to feel God and he wept the entire service amen and he told me I hadn't been in church in a long time I'm here to tell you this thing is real 
You can't just choose where you want to go and expect God to meet you there. You have to be where God wants you to be. Remember, our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. I'm preaching to somebody here that's allowing your family to be infected by the world. How do you expect your kid to be spiritual if you're not plugging your kids into spiritual things? How do you expect to be your kids to be spiritual if the only time they see you pray is when you pray at church and you put on a show for the preacher? I'm preaching real talk tonight. Because I believe Jesus is coming back. And if we're going to be saved, it's because we have a relationship with him. Because we love him. Hey man, I, I, I try my best. Hey man, to put on the hey amen to put on the best picture for church for my kids. Hey man, my wife and I hey man, keep things at a minimum around our children. And sometimes it gets hard because we live in the flesh, but I'm here to tell you, I don't want my kids hey amen to grow up and say, Daddy always talked about the church. Mommy always talked about the church. I want my kids to leave the house. And say, I saw my daddy struggle. Amen. But I saw him push through. I saw my mama struggle. But I saw her push through. Amen. The church is where it's at. You can't be infected by the world. We have got to be the ones affecting the world. Going to Galatians chapter 4. And I'm skipping about three quarters of my message tonight. That I just simply don't have the time. Galatians chapter 4 verse 16 through 18. And this is where I got the message that God gave me. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. This is Galatians chapter 4 verse number 16. Am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that they might, that you might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And not only when I am present with you. Paul here poses a question and he says, am I your enemy because I tell you the truth? And he goes on in verse 17 and he says, they, and I begin to look at that word. Amen. You know what they is? They is anybody that goes against the will of God in your life. They is the all is all the people that goes against what God wants to do and his purpose and his will in your life. It don't matter if they match your personality. That's all hogwash. Amen. I believe there's a spiritual connection, not a personality connection. I busted the barriers down tonight because some of you think, oh, that's just not my personality. No, that's not it. There's a spiritual connection that supersedes your personality. There's got to be something burning deep down inside of you that says, hey, hey, man, the preacher's not my enemy. The church is not my enemy. God is not my enemy. I've got to understand there are people that's going to say things. They, your flatterers, anybody that's in contrast to the word of God or the will of God, anybody that's in contrast to those, amen, that want to destroy you. There's always going to be flatters to get you to walk away from this precious gospel and to walk what seems more sensible to your flesh. I guess that's why I have such a big problem with psychology because they go after your strengths to overcome your weaknesses. God's reverse. God goes after your weaknesses and you become an overcomer. 
It's a total opposite thing here. There's a disconnect. I'm here to tell you, if you could just understand the power of your God and get away from the ones that are trying to lead you away from God. This is Brother Eugene talked about it today. There were some friends I had to cut off. Hey Amen. There were some people I had to stop talking to. Why? Because my goal is more important than my current situation. Hey Amen. My destination is more important hey Amen. than what I'm dealing with right now. How many young people backslidden out of the church because they served God for the social aspect? Of I'm preaching to somebody. That I'm telling you, church is not a social experiment. Church is not some kind of special project that God put together to see how we react to different scriptures and different circumstances. But the church is where your hope is. The church is where your deliverance is. Amen. Amen. We can't allow the world to infect the church, but we got to make sure the church is daily affecting the world around us. I don't want to walk around, amen, with half an arm or half a leg and say, my God can't help me. What are you zealous about tonight? Because the Bible says that we're all zealous after something. We live in a very diverse country right now. It offers many things. But humanity is always zealous after something. Even if it's sleep, that's still zealous. Because that's all you can think about. Man, when I get home, I'm going to go right to sleep. And still being zealous about something. Just as much as being zealous about working your job. Or zealous about running the track. Or zealous about going to college. Or zealous about going on a, hey man, your uh, annual health kick. Hey man, but we all are zealous about something in our life. We have to understand, hey man, humanity was, was designed to be, to have zeal. Jesus, hey amen. In, 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 in the first chapter of Acts, the Bible says that Jesus in his humanity was alive after his passion. I got a couple of you. What gets your clock ticking? I'm not talking about being mad. We all know what makes us mad. What can get you excited enough to get rid of your stinking thinking about how you personally believe about what church is right now if the preaching of preaching of the word can excite you then you're not going to like heaven because the word of God is going to be ringing out 24 hours that's the only way we can explain if eternity is 24 hours 365 days you we're governed by time, but for all eternity, the Word of God is going to be projected. If you don't get excited about the Word of God, you're not going to like heaven. If you can't get excited about how God can deliver a drug addict, you're not going to like heaven. Because there's going to be a whole bunch of ex-drug addicts in heaven. There's going to be a whole bunch of ex-alcoholics in heaven. And then there's going to be a whole bunch of ex-perverts in heaven. Can I just get real? And then somebody that fell in love with the Word of God. Somebody that had got a relationship with the Word of God. Somebody that stood up and said, I refuse to be infected by the world. I'm going to affect and then somebody around me to realize that there's something better to life. Amen. Than this present world that we're living in. You should be concerned if your teenager, amen, gets more excited, amen, about a ball game than church. You should be excited. Why is if your husband, amen, gets more excited about a ball game, amen, than the word of God being preached. Amen, husband, you should be worried about your wives. Amen, if the things, amen, of this world are more exciting to her. Infection destroys limb by limb. 
lack of care robbed my, one of my good friends of both of his legs. But he refuses to quit. A man with no, no legs still works a 40-hour work week. Some of y'all get a little cold and you're down for like three. Can't even get out of the bed. You're just like, oh my God. But a man that gets up 45 minutes earlier than everybody else, amen, before he could put his legs on and drags himself around the house, amen, drags himself to the bathroom, drags himself into the shower by his arms. I'm here to tell you, if you want to get to heaven, there's a way to get to heaven. If you got to drag yourself around, I'm trying to wake somebody up. Amen, King Ahab let the, amen, the nation of Israel get to him, and he walked after the ways of his daddy. And it infected his household. Amen. His, Je his wife Jezebel. Amen. Was ate by dogs. Why? Because she became infected by the carnality of this world. We all shout of the glorious testimonies of what God has done. But how many testimonials are the other way where sin won? Suicide has taken lives of people. Drugs have taken lives of people. Homicides have taken lives of people. Young women that's been raped that will never recover because of the psychological damage in their mind. I believe it's time for the church to become alive more than ever. To show them that there's a way out of this. Amen. That killing somebody is not the answer. Being killed is not the answer. Amen. Raping somebody is not the answer. Being able to overcome being raped. Amen. There's an answer in that. I'm here to tell you we got to believe that this gospel is the greatest thing that ever was and ever will be. You know, it's an old message tonight but I guarantee you some of you are going to blindly stare off at the corner of this church building while I preach but you'll go home and something will excite you those that say I don't get excited about nothing there is something in your life that excites you It talks about that they will, here it says, they, zealousy affect you, but not well. They will exclude you that, they, that you might affect them. This, this young man was talking about my message tonight. You have to be careful who you hang out with. Because if they're not being changed, hold on, I want you to grasp this huge revelation here. Huge, re I mean huge. If they're not being changed, then somebody's being changed. Somebody's getting comfortable being around that kind of situation. Oh, I'm just trying to win them, my God, if they're not being changed then I want to tell you, you're being changed. Because every moment we live, we're being changed. It depends who we hang around with. It depends who we lock arms with. And if the other individual is not being changed, somebody's being changed, and it's you being changed. Well, I just don't, I can't hang around church folk. You need to pray through. Oh, I feel more comfortable around the sinners. You need to pray through. When we're saved, it brings us out of sin. The Bible says, preach this gospel to every creature. Don't compromise with the world. I know it's a Sunday night message, but I'm trying to remind somebody, amen, an alcoholic becomes an alcoholic because somebody gives them a beer. Amen. A homosexual becomes a homosexual because they, they're, they're hanging around somebody that's, that's playing with that kind of idea. I'm just being real tonight. Amen. A pervert becomes a pervert, but because of the material and the individuals he hangs around. 
You have to understand, you become who you hang around. You, you can't say, hey man, I'm an alpha male. I'm an alpha this. I'm not a follower. Honey, everybody's a follower. Everybody's a follower. You're either following Jesus or you're following the devil. You got to get a hold of this. Everybody's a follower. You just got to get around who you're going to follow. You got to get your eyes fixed on who you're going to follow. If the people that you're hanging around is not changing, they act like you're there for you. But one day they're going to shut you out because they don't want to change who they are. Romans 16, 18, I'm going to ask my wife to come to the piano. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. I want to read that again. I love that. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Yesterday we went to Magic Mountain. call me overprotective or what but I saw way too much stuff that my boys could get in trouble with at Magic Mountain and there's many many people out there with fair speeches and enticing words to satisfy their, their flesh, their gut and the Bible says that they're waiting to deceive us. We all don't want to be deceived. But I'm afraid some of us are being deceived. I know tonight's not a, a jumping and shouting message. But I want to end with this scripture. I did not let my little boy, now he's 16 years old, he's still my little boy. I didn't let my, my boy just run freelance. Why? I was 16 once. And I knew, I know what goes through the mind of a 16 year old boy. I have too many friends that father children at the age of 16. I didn't let my little girl hardly out of my sight. My little girl's why I own guns. Pretty proficient with them too, just to let you know. I love my little girl. been really dealing with me about the direction of some of our young people and the, the, the direction that you as parents are allowing your children to walk oh I gotta give them space I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus Christ you are their parent not their friend I love my mama See the problems with problem. I, I don't want to offend nobody here. Please, I don't offend nobody. But I'm just, I'm just telling you, because I grew up in a split home, and that's the majority of America today is kids growing up in a split home. That's majority. It's the society that we live in. But the problem with, with a split home is, and I wasn't even planning on getting into this. So pray for me, the bro, brother I borrow. Pray for. Me. Is we're afraid to change the direction of our children's journey because we don't want to lose them to the other parent. And I appreciate my mom because not once was she ever afraid to tell me I was doing the wrong thing. I remember I did something, I was I was like 16, I was maybe 15 and a half, and I did something I'm not proud of.
And I remember because the guy didn't press charges, I thought I got off the got off the hook. So I grabbed my horn and drove down to Victorville. Oh, I was 16, I had a driver's license. I was already down there. I was working, I had a full-time job, paying, I was paying my truck payment. I was being responsible, 16 years old. My mama comes marching in at Victorville Church, points her finger at me, and thumbs it for me to hit the door. I could have got mad at my mama and said, you know what, how dare you disrespect me? I'm 16 years old. I could have threw my mama attitude, an, an, an attitude. I got a full-time job pay my own stuff at least I thought I did right you pay one bill and you think you're paying everything right my mom was not afraid to check my attitude and she didn't let me play for the victory choir for quite a while you talk about shameful I was embarrassed. I was a saxophone player. I had I had opening solos for the choir. Man, I was I was that. My mama brought me down this big. And it's because my mama's love for her children. One day, Carrie's gonna be back in church. You raised her the same way you raised me. My mom refused to allow her children to get infected by the world where they didn't desire spiritual things. Because of the raising of my mother, I give my grandparents honor, amen, they're awesome, but my mama raised me. And she taught me that the things of God is greater than anything in this world. She put her whole life on hold just to raise her children. Jesus gave his life so that we could become the children of God. I wonder, is there somebody in this place that wants to get zealous about the things of God? They sang some old songs tonight. I get just as excited as a new song. In fact, I probably get more excited on the old songs than I do the new songs. Elder Morgan calls them 7-Eleven songs, seven words, sing 11 times. And we live in a world where we worship the broadcast of talent. Wow, they can sing. Wow, look at their voice. Wow, look at their ability to play. Wow, look at their... When's the last time you looked at somebody and said, wow, that person's really got a prayer life? When's the last time you say, wow, I wish I could get in the word like brother so-and-so. I wish I could get into the word like sister so-and-so. Hey, Amen. when's the last time you desire some spiritual things? Hey, Amen. all of us would like to sing. Hey, Amen. like Whitney Houston. Hey, Amen. and R. Kelly, if you like all those singers. All of us would love to be able to play the guitar. Hey, Amen. like uh, uh, the guy that wrote Purple Rain. Hey, Amen. all of us would love to have the ability to play all those instruments like that. Hey, Amen. or be able to move a crowd like Elvis Presley, but how many young people out there, how many parents out there are willing or wanting to say, God, I desire the spiritual things over the carnal things. We have too many apostolic preachers that are sending their kids off to a college to learn how to, amen, sing and learn how to play an instrument. Amen, but they're not learning how to pray in a prayer room. They're not learning how to get a relationship with God. Amen, there's a huge disconnect where we worship the carnal over the things that are spiritual. Where if an overweight preacher gets up and preaches, we judge him because of his physical condition and forget the words that comes out of his mouth.
We have too many men trying to become models, too many women trying to become supermodels in the church. And there's not enough prayer warriors. Everybody wants this ministry. Oh, if I could just get the mic, preacher, I'd be an on-fire Christian. Everybody wants a platform ministry. You know where my ministry started. There was somebody that posted, amen, on a minister's uh, forum the other day. And he, he said, he said and, and it was a young guy saying this. And I was like, wow, it sounds like he's offended by cleaning the bathroom. He said, I don't believe that young preachers should have to clean the bathrooms and mop the floors and wipe the toilets and vacuum the sanctuary. I believe that young preachers should be taught, amen, in classrooms how to win souls. You know where I learned how to be a preacher? was following my grandfather as he cleaned the toilets following my grandfather as he worked on the roofs of the of the church and then cleaning and then out the evaporative cooler you know where I learned how to be a preacher you know where I learned how to be a soul winner it wasn't in a classroom it was following a preacher it was following in his footsteps hey man my grandpa would say hey man I'm going go here I'm going to go witnessing and I said hold on grandpa I'm going to go with you hey man I'm telling you it's not in a classroom I mean it's by following a man of God if I just had the right teaching I could do it the problem is we want to be taught our whole life professional students but never willing or never believing we could do the job she has a relative that went to school her whole life. And the brother of that relative don't have a college education and makes three or four times the money as the guy that went to school his whole life. Multiple degrees. I've heard this has been some very interesting table talk at, at Thanksgiving. I've heard him say it. How much is that piece of paper going to get you? Can you take that to the bank? We, we, we're afraid to do what is necessary. We all want the ministry. We all want to be a soul winner. We all want to be saved. This goes to every aspect where you're at right now. We all want to be what we're desiring to do. But the question is, will you choose to be infected by the world or are you going to allow God to move through you so you can affect the world? I don't know how else to say it, Mama. You raised me the best of your ability I was mowing lawns at the age of 12 I was following a maintenance man around the apartments at the age of 13 14 years old learning how to change faucets and do plumbing in apartment complexes hey Amen. I've always followed people around if I wanted to learn how to do something there's not enough people wanting to follow Jesus in this world that we're living in because you're too busy following the world. I'm just preaching real talk. You want to be saved? You can be saved. There ain't nothing in the world that can keep you from being saved. Brother Eugene, Brother Sato, Sister Darlene, if y'all could stand up I, as, as I call your name, Brother Alvarez. Sister Alvarez, Brother Ibarra, Sister Hicks, Sister Farago, Brother Farago. And I know I, 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 I'm probably missing some people, all these people that, that are standing. Realize that one day this world was leading them in the wrong direction. They were doing drugs. They were drinking. 
Some of them were following gangbangers. Some of them were involved in some other stuff. But they chose to not be infected by the world anymore. And they got and they broke free of alcohol. They broke free of drugs. And then this this young lady that came in the first time, she wasn't married and she didn't have her kids. In fact, when she had that baby right there in that man's arms, her husband's arms, when it was born, when he was born, amen, when little Ricardo was born, they immediately took him from you. Is that the truth? But look what God can do. Look what God can do. They got married in this church. They have all their kids in church. I'm here to tell you, amen, Brother Eugene, amen, I could go down his testimony of drugs and alcohol, almost losing his job. But one day, all of a sudden, Brother Ibarra, amen, there, there was a direction change. Amen, he chose, amen, a different direction, a new path. He wasn't going to conform to the idolatry of this world. But he said, I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus. I want a change in my life. Brother Farrago, I remember when you first came to Barstow, military, long time ago. Has it been easy? No. But God is doing something special right now. Because of His faithfulness and your willingness to follow the voice of God. This man got married to this wonderful lady right here. He hadn't seen his kids in 20 years. 20 years. All of a sudden, they're like, Dad, we want to come to the wedding. His two daughters had never met. At the wedding is when they met for the first time. Amen. And now they have a connection. Amen. I know. Amen. They've been talking. I'm telling you, if you want, amen, for God to do something in your life, amen, it can happen if you want it to happen. But you got to choose you this day. Amen. What side you're going to be on. God has great things for you, sis. You gotta trust him greater than any other thing in this world. And you gotta believe that God can do it. Because God can. I was a broken little boy who was headed toward drugs and alcohol. I was probably gonna be an abusive, abusive husband like my daddy was. I had a temper. I would kick the bathroom door in going after my sister, a locked bathroom door. I had a temper. I'm not proud of it. One day Jesus changed everything who I was and every hurt. When I fought people on the playground at the school, I didn't see the face of the individual I was fighting. I saw my father's face. And I punched the living daylights out of that face because I thought I was doing it to my daddy. But one day God allowed me to forgive my daddy was the greatest release I ever had in my life. The greatest weight was lifted off my life when I was able to forgive my daddy. God can do it for you. I'm a nobody, but I know a somebody. If you just believe and you choose the way that God's wanting you to go, I don't know what you've been through, but God does, and there's a better road. There's hope. There's direction. I just got through speaking to this young lady. I just called my pops the other day, and I said, hey, pops, I just called you. I know the hurricane. You're right in the eye of it. I just, I just want you to know your son's praying for you. I love you. And if I was close enough, I would drive out there and wait through the storm with you. And I, that's what God can do. Amen. God brings hope to a situation where there is no hope. Amen. I choose, chose not to let the, the affections of the world steal what God was wanting to give me. you got to serve only one God. You've only got to serve one. Will you 
you stand in this house tonight.